15 years. And somebody's been making a meal for me, washing my clothes, providing me a place to live. And I just want to say thank you. Because it, it matters that you did those things. I'm living under some bridge next to the Bighorn River in a box. And that's because of you. And I just want to say thank you. And then just sit back and watch. Are you, are you, are you okay? No, no, it's fine. What's going on? See, notice they assume something's wrong with you because all you did was say, thank you. The intentional life for Thoreau makes more sense because you can come to the end of your life and realize that you've done something with it. Look at what he says. I left the woods for as good a reason as I went there. Perhaps, he says, read with me, I'm on 385, top of the page. Perhaps it seemed to me that I had several more lives to live. What a great way to look at your life. You don't live a life. Some of you will write this down. This is so cool. You don't live a life. You live lives. If you want proof of how that's the case, you could have slept in this morning and not been here. And you would not have heard these words. Now, granted, they're on video for you. But you wouldn't have heard these words. You could have not signed up for our class. And you wouldn't have heard these words. Well, that's interesting. You don't live life, you live lives, multiple, lots of them. And he says, I figured maybe I had more lives to live. And he did, he lived, a, he lived a, a other lives after Walden. He continued to live, right? Notice he says, and he couldn't spare any more time for the one at Walden. It's remarkable, look what he says about habit. It's remarkable how easily and insensibly, without thinking, we fall into a particular route and make a beaten track for ourselves. In other words, we do the same thing day after day after day without ever even asking why. I had not lived at Walden there a week before my feet wore a path from my door to the pond side. And though it is five or six years since I trod it, that means walked it, it's still quite distinct. In other words, he says, the little path that I made to the front door of the cabin, it's still there. He's making a word picture point we live our lives so repetitively, over and over and over. And we don't think about why we do what we do. We just kind of do it. Look at what he says to finish. It is true, I fear, that others may have fallen into it and so help to keep it open. The surface of the earth is soft and impressible by the feet of men, and so with the paths which the mind travels. How worn and dusty then must be the highways of the world. How deep the ruts of tradition and conformity. I did not wish to take a cabin passage, but rather to go before the mast and on the deck of the world. For there I could best see the moonlight amid the mountains. I do not wish to go below now. In other words, he says, on the boat of life, I want to be up on the top, even if there's a storm. I want to be right in the middle of it. Thoreau! Dude, okay, two years. What did you learn? I asked my student the same question. He came back, he said, I made it, man, I made it. He said, I've never been so happy to see my truck when I got back. He said, I've never been so happy to drive back to my house. He said, to get a shower all the night. He said, but there was something about me that, I, that, that was changed. I said, I asked him this question. I said, what'd you learn? What did you learn? Isn't it funny how the adults in your life, since you were a little kid, kept asking you after a day of school, what'd you learn? So you're going to ask the same question someday as an adult, and here's why. You're going to realize at some point, you wake up. Remember Emerson's self-reliance? You wake up, and you realize, dude, i got to start learning something. I'm getting older, and I'm not learning anything. What is it Thoreau learned? Read it with me. I'm on the second paragraph on 385. You may want to write this down in your journal or in your notes as we go. What is it he learned? I learned this, at least. By my, look what he called his life. Some of you will begin to call your life this. Look what he calls his, his life at Walden. He doesn't call it a life, he calls it a what? Experiment. Like in science, you know how you do an experiment? Why can't life be an experiment? I'll try this for a while. If it works out, I'll do it. If it doesn't work out, I can control it. I got options. I'm not tied in. An experiment. Look what he says. That if one, read it with me, and then you try and put it in your own words. Here's what he learned, 385, second paragraph. If one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. Live the life you dream. Live the life you want. 
not the life you have to. I've had students, man, Orland sucks. I, I'm going to get out. I don't know. And a year or two years later, after, uh, we'll do it. Oh, man, I never got out. The Rose says, well, then get out. You choose. He says, I learned you gotta, you gotta want, you got to want to live your life. But keep going. He says about a person who lives with intentionality, he will put some things, there it is, read it with me. He will put some things behind. Will pass an invisible boundary. New, universal, and more liberal laws will begin to establish themselves around and within him. Or the old laws be expanded and interpreted in his favor in a more liberal sense. And he will live with the license of a higher order of beings. In proportion, as he simplifies his life, the laws of the universe will appear less complex, and solitude will not be solitude, nor poverty, poverty, nor weakness, weakness. And then the most famous maybe lines of conclusion, read it with me and then we'll be done. If you have built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now put the foundations under them. If you have built castles in the air, dreams. In the air. They're in the future. That's where they should be. But put foundations under them means what? Put it in your own words right now. Write down what you think that means. What does it mean that Thoreau says it's good to dream castles in the air? But you have to have the foundation that you put underneath. It. What does that mean? Right. It's good to dream. But you've got to begin to build that dream from a foundation. Of course, that foundation is your education. Uh, uh uh Don't confuse education with school. Your schooling is only a small part of your education. Your education is your life. Your education is coming and listening to a lecture on Henry David Thoreau's Walden and then say, you know what? Thoreau is right. I waste a lot of energy on stuff I can control. And stuff I can't control, I'm still holding on to that garbage. And i got to let it go. Throw is right. See, that's called your education. Well, there you go. An introduction to Walden. Now, when we come back, I've given you the overview. Kind of like what I did with Emerson. When we come back, we'll work then specifically with some words from Walden. How does Thoreau himself say it? And I'll give you a heads up. The language is sometimes going to be a little bit complex, so we're going to have to follow it. Reading Walden will help us to be better readers in general. Okay? All right, guys. Thank you. An introduction to Walden.